Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay. Hi. Uh, preemptive like. Original link to the video, top of the description, below that link to the Discord, would love to have you. Roman Military Technology and Tactics. My name is Connor, if you are new. Uh, original link to the Did I say all this? I like to learn. Let's go. 2,000 years ago, the Roman army is the best equipped army in the world. While the architects have mastered the art of manipulating stone and concrete, military engineers have fashioned metal and wood to create devastating weapons of war. The Roman foot soldier's main weapon is a fearsome sword called a gladius, a double-edged blade about 18 inches long with a sharp point. It was used for stabbing and thrusting rather than slashing. But if a sword could be deadly at close quarters, their spear, called a pilum, could kill from a distance. It can be thrown with lethal accuracy around 100 feet. The pilum's designed basically to kill. It's designed to, to pierce people, to pierce armor, to pierce their shields. Can I sound smart for a second, I think? Or, or, or isn't it designed so that it's like broken or unusable to the person? Like it'll get stuck in their shield or it, it won't be good enough for them to... to it, maybe I didn't sound so smart. Never mind. Okay. The pilum has a six-foot-long wooden shaft topped with a two-foot-long iron shank. The tip of the shank was triangular and would have been difficult to remove once it impaled the enemy. The drawback of any javelin-type weapon is that the enemy may pick it up and throw it back. But Roman military scientists employ the latest metal-making technology to protect their men. The iron tip of the pilum is tempered through rapid heating and cooling, making it hard and strong. The shaft is untempered, leaving it soft. Striking a shield, the pilum's strong tip penetrates, but the soft shaft bends, making it useless for the enemy to throw it back at the Romans. I was sort of half right, guys. I, I can I can I get like fifty percent credit? I I thought like this breaks. Protecting your soldiers from injury is just as important as arming them for attack. Early Roman soldiers chain wear mail. chain mail called lorica hamata, vertical rows of solid washer-like rings made from bronze or iron. Can I say something? In terms of like a slashing attack, yeah, I can see that uh, chain mail as being really good. But is that going to stop a spear or a fast arrow? That's just going to... You're telling me that that's... You, you know what I mean? Like, for, for sla like for getting a slash from a sword onto your, your chest when you have that, I think you'd, you'd, you'd be okay. But any sort of piercing thing, I just... I don't know. Vertical rows of solid washer-like rings made from bronze or iron are linked to riveted rings that run horizontally. It does have its flaws. It is very heavy, weighing around 33 pounds. Jesus! And enemy arrows can penetrate between the rings to injure the wearer. <laughs> weapons reconstruction expert Ben Giel studies the impact of Roman weapons. So it literally explodes through the links and makes its own way. Roman armorers come up with a far superior form of protection. Articulated plate armor called lorica segmentata, made from a series of overlapping iron plates joined together by leather straps. It's as flexible as chain mail, but one third lighter. The protective shoulder and body pads worn by football players work in much the same way. The light segmented sections on the shoulders and chest allow movement, but spread the impact of a heavy blow around the body. The Lorica Segmentata is built to withstand an enemy arrow. 
Well, it went in, but only about that far. The arrow may have made a dent, but the armor saves its wearer from serious injury. From any injury, I think. And if the Romans' weaponry has a modern feel, then so do the tactics they use. Some can still be seen today on the streets of New York. January 31st, 2002. Facing demonstrations against the World Trade Organization, the New York police defend themselves with the latest body armor and high-tech protection. But this use of shields is remarkably similar to something 2,000 years ago. The Roman uh, legions uh, know exactly how to... I just, I always think of Lord of the Rings, Helm's Deep, when they're, the uruk are going up the thing. But obviously it's a his, history tactic. It, I, I just go to Lord of the Rings. I... Fight heavily armed foes. They use the testudo, Latin, for tortoise. Legionnaires bunch together and lock their shields in formation to create a large protective screen. A formation as effective in attack as it is in defense. The soldiers use a large curved shield, which is made from another modern sounding material, plywood. Plywood's huh? very easy to make. You just take um, a few layers of wood and glue them together with the grain at 90 degrees to each other on the different layers. And that provides a protection that's fairly firm um but that is still a little bit flexible and that's how um they're able to produce these curved shields Lamin i had no idea plywood was that old laminating the alternate layers at 90 degrees gives the shield its strength drop a marble on a thin sheet of wood and it breaks easily put two sheets together with the grains in the same direction and they still break but cross the grains, and the marble bounces off. But I want to see how many. I want to see how many of those little sheets of wood, going in the same direction as the grain, would 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 uh, resist the impact of the marble. Just to see like how much stronger two pieces are against the grain versus X with the grain. Grains, and the marble bounces off. But it isn't just the foot soldiers who have the high-tech equipment. The Romans can also wheel out the big guns. I think one of the things that impresses me most about Roman mil military technology is, is the artillery. Few examples of Roman artillery survive, but the Romans left detailed clues as to how to recreate them. Jeel is a member of the Ermine Street Guard. How Guys, to... aren't... isn't... That mechanical advantage is so fascinating. When artillery survive, but the Romans left detailed clues. Like, try and twist that thing with... with... these iron poles that are, like, each a foot long. And it's in, And then just... elongate them, and then it's so easy all of a sudden. I just... I... ...as to how to recreate them. Giel is a member of the Ermine Street Guard, Britain's leading Roman reenactment group. He believes their recreations help us to understand how Roman technology worked. Before this was done, nobody Jeez. really knew how these weapons and how this equipment worked. But just knowing how it was constructed doesn't really tell you how it was used. And, and that's why experimental archaeology like this is very important. This is the scorpion. It fires iron-tipped bolts. It was used in the first stages of attack and during sieges. It pierces armor and kills instantly. It's a bit like a giant crossbow. The rigid bow arms are cranked back, storing the energy in the two vertical skeins made of rope and sinew. Once the bowstring is released, it fires the arrow 1,200 feet at incredible speeds. Question though, won't, won't, won't each shot be less powerful than the next simply by overusing the ropes? 
So I, I'd imagine the, the first the first shot this thing takes, I, I'm sure you can replace the rope, but like the first time is going to be the most powerful. And each successive, each successive time you fire it with the same, same rope sinew, I would imagine is slightly less powerful than the last shot. Just because wear and 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 not having the tension, they they must have had some way to counteract that. But I gotta pee, guys. Be right back. Okay, back. I wash my hands. This is the bolt that will be placed here. When I release the bolt, you'll see that the wooden shaft underneath it also projects forward and that acts very similar to the barrel of a gun keeping the bolt as straight as possible when it leaves the weapon as you can see it's fully maneuverable oh, that's aim cool. at a target and when i'm happy to shoot at them i will No. <laughs> they got the fly. They killed the fly. Look at the fly. And look at where the bullet hits. That was a good shot. Watch this. And when I'm happy to shoot at them, I will. Look at the fly. Look at the fly right there. <laughs> that was a good shot. The Scorpion is a lethally effective weapon. They would have caused devastating injuries. There are skeletons of British people who were probably killed by the Romans when they invaded. There's one guy who had an arrowhead. Look at, look at the arrowhead right there. Head ...through his spine. Another guy who had a catapult bolt through his head and it went through his skull about here. It must have killed him instantly. It's about as clean of a death Although as you can get. Although it's an effective anti-personnel weapon, the Scorpion is of little use in attacking a building. For that, the Romans need something with a bit more punch. The Onager and the Ballista. I think the stone throwers are the most devastating piece of, of, of Roman technology. These ones confuse the heck out of me because I'm thinking when I would make it, like the hardest thing with the release mechanism is is how do you get the ball to release from the uh whatever leather hide pouch it's in that it's launched from and how do they get it so accurate without it like accidentally like staying in the pouch and like throwing into the ground or something like how do These they get the pieces of artillery all right that's different but i'm talking about like the big ballista that doesn't just fire large stones at these that don't just fire like this i get this it's, it's going to be propelled like a slingshot i mean the one where where it, it's like i'm not going to go to google plane you know what i'm talking about the, like the whoosh, whoosh, boom these pieces of artillery fire large stones at the enemy during sieges they propel projectiles so high into the air that they can break down enemy walls. The whizzing noise this one. of the stones strikes terror into Rome's enemies. How do they do that without it getting caught in the pouch? Strikes terror into Rome's enemies. Like, I would imagine that tossing it and then the ball staying in it and then just going clunk right back into the machine or like hitting someone else. To increase the fear factor, they're painted How black. How do they do that? So they're harder to see. It's very effective physically, but it's also a huge psychological weapon. Um, and enemies whom the Romans are fighting um, are really scared of this stuff. The ballista works like the scorpion, but is bigger and more powerful. I really want to know. It can fire a... I really want to know how often they replace the rope sinew. 60 pounds stone forward, 
or a three-foot bolt around 1,500 feet, allowing the soldiers to stand well away from enemy archers. The speed of the missile is phenomenal, hitting its target at around 115 miles per hour. Anyone sustaining a direct hit would be killed instantly. The Onager uses a different principle. It catapults basketball-sized stones, weighing up to 50 pounds, nearly a thousand feet, using a single arm and sling. The vertical arm is powered by a large horizontal skein of rope, coiled and twisted to create a rotational force. The skein acts like a spring, storing energy to be released on firing. The more powerful the spring, storing energy to be released on firing. Look, look, that's how they do it. Look, there's four, there's four ropes attached. Then there's two ropes attached. Somehow two of them release. Firing. The more powerful the spring, the more powerful the catapult. The Romans use rope made from sinews because it's very springy but and gives back an still, how do they get that? To exceptionally release? high percentage of the energy stored in it. Each Roman legion would carry around 60 pieces of artillery. The combinations of technology and tactics makes the Roman army the premier fighting force in Europe for 500 years and influences military tactics for the next 1500. Awesome video. I'm Ranked really back. I'm really curious how often they have to change the rope because the rope's elasticity is is going to fade over time or just the hold it has on here. And how they get the the two it, it has four ropes, how they get it to release and feet and therefore allow the projectile to go. Really cool video, guys. Uh, I got a lot more to do today. Hope you're doing well. If not, chin up, you'll be good soon. Don't worry. Bye guys.